I installed my um, boot trim. It's pretty beat up. I'm not sure I'm really going to use it. I'll have to see once I clean it up. But for now, I installed it because you need it <clears throat> to set this bow because the measurement comes from the center leading edge of this trim to the center middle of the tack string. And uh, the dimension I'm using came from Electron Tops. Uh, my top didn't come from them, but they have a really cool book. Like their catalog shows every top you can imagine. And uh, they, they show the dimensions for your bows. And, uh, or certainly for this bow. So I've got the bow height from them. I've got some bailing wire some tape, and uh, I'm just going to get cracking and we'll see how it goes. So let's see. So I'm just going to roughly get it where it needs to be. My dimension is 20 and a half. Sorry, 20 and 3 quarters. So I'm right in the middle. That's more or less 20 and 3 quarters. This is just very rough. I'm just going to let it hang there for now. And I'm going to adjust it here in a little bit. And now I'm going to use the bailing wire. If I can find the bailing wire, I have good. So I'm just running it through just a couple big holes in the uh, front of this frame. I'm just going to run it through here. And for now, I'm just going to wrap it around this, get this pretty plumb, and uh, Still pretty good right there. Same thing on the other side. So checking that center, still reasonably good. It's more like it's about a 
quarter inch low, and actually I wanted a quarter inch high because uh, when I when I set the curtain in there, I'm going to put right much tension on it to get that curtain all nice and flat, and it's going to pull this bow down a little bit. So instead of 21 and three 20 and three quarters, I want 21, which is about where I am right now. So the next critical thing is going to check it here and there. That just tells me what we've already done is figured out where the, the this is at the correct elevation in the center. Now we have to make sure that this is parallel to this, even though it's a curve. Now I'm just going to check it at this joint and at this joint. And they need to be the same. In the absence of that, that, in fact I can see that this is greater than that, but that thing will uh, really look funny from behind the car. The window will look funny if, if you could ever even get it flat. I'm saying this like I know what I'm talking about. I've never done this before, but from what I've read. I'm going to go right from the joint and try to basically go straight up. So to the back edge of that, it's about 19 and 3 quarters. And over here, it's about 18 and 3 quarters. So a half inch difference. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to cut two blocks. One that goes in here, one that goes in there. And uh, it's going to be a little squirrely to do. But I'll cut it out of like a piece of one by 2 to where I'll set these the same. And... I'll end up, uh, because it's an inch off, this needs to go down a half inch, and that needs to go up a half inch in order to keep the center at the correct uh, location. So, I'm going to work on that right now. Alright, so I got everything set. <clears throat> got this bow in the right place. These bows, I think, are in the right place. Uh, they have a little more room to mess with those than, uh, than this. <clears throat> I ran the wire, which is pulling tension back this way, and put these, had some, had an old like, broom handle that I cut up, and uh, these are the same. I had to mess with them a little bit. In the end, I cut them a little bit short, so I had to add a washer to each one of them, but they hold this thing perfectly, so I have the correct measurement from the center up to the center of the middle, and then my measurement from here up and there up are the same, so it's running parallel with the back of the car. So next step are the pads. I'm going to go across here. Uh, I've just got to make sure that the hardware I have for this is going to work, so I'm going to mess with that now, and then I'll move on to the pads. All right, I'm installing the webbing. Um, I've already done the passenger side and discovered what works and what doesn't work, so now I'm doing the driver's side. I'm using um, number 832 3 inch stainless steel machine screws and um, little stainless steel uh, screw trim, both of which came from like Home Depot. So just in the interest of making them both the same, there's a hole, there's, there's several holes here, four of which are used for the screws. That's one, two, three, and four. And then there's two other holes. I'm not exactly sure what they are. But I'm using this hole up here as a reference. And this um, binding, I'm basically centering over that hole. And uh, I'll pull this all out. So I visually center it. I've just got the webbing um, held on with spring clamps on the two bows. So I hold that on there, find the hole with the awl. Pretty easy to do, I've already done this one. And then 
push the awl all the way through. The awl is a quarter inch awl, so uh, it spreads that fabric well enough for me to get the screw through there. And then, oh, okay, well, that's the sound of the screw falling under the car. And I only have four. I've got to find it right here. So then put the screw in the trim. Things are crazy slippery. Pull out that all. And my webbing folds over like it covers all the fasteners. That's why I keep having to flip this stupid pad up. But I'll show that in a second. I'll grab the right screw there. Get it through and then in the hole. Pretty straightforward. And now I want to find the next hole. And again, I've lined up this webbing with the indentations on the bows so that it's you know heading in the in the correct direction. And uh, I'm not gonna have some funky wrinkle when I attach the rest of it, because you do attach the stuff at the front first, everything across this header bow. And now I'm going to do the next hole, which is one, two, three, down here. Actually, I think on the other side I used this hole right here. You check it with a screw. that hole. Then this one. Just making sure all these. I cleaned up the threads on the other one. Haven't done that here. Something funky going on on that one. I might not be able to get a screw in there so I might use this hole and then a little bit of glue at the bottom. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to do that. All right. So this hole right here Find the hole with the awl and then push the awl all the way through. Pull it back. And back through that same hole. and snug. Next one's out here. And the last one. Okay. 
right here. That all is crazy sharp. Don't drive it through your palm. It'll suck. Huh, I don't like that. I got off on that hole a tiny bit. Stuff gets pulled pretty snug down to that last bow, so it um it cleans itself up pretty well from a wrinkle standpoint. So there we go. These four in there, holding the sucker down. And uh, now I'm going to attach the last one and not the, um, not the center two bows. Also, I made a change on my center two bows. Um, I got rid of the, I put tack strip basically from here to where the padding indentation ends, even over the little plate that the two screws go in, so that I can staple all this. At some point, some of these, I think all of this year was screws, but at some point they switched and they started uh, using staples on these. I think it's better. I think it's easier to do than the two screws. And the two screws have to be pretty specific types of screws, really, really short screws, because it, they're blind holes. And, uh, you know, I can't buy those screws around here locally. I couldn't find them easily online, so I just decided I'm going with tack strip. That may bite me. We'll see. But uh, I think it's going to be okay. The other thing is I, I did the other side over here completely, and... Uh, the bows were really not in a good position. Um, I found some information about, and I'll put a link to it uh, in the bottom or in the description, but I found some information where you measure from the trailing edge of the header bow to the leading edge of bow two, and then the trailing edge of bow two to the leading edge of bow three. So I found something that gives dimensions, and I'm going to try to set it by those instead of the other method, which was just sort of put them vertically. But what I found is when I laid my top on here, <clears throat> it didn't line up with the pockets for the bar that goes through here. And it was off too much. And the bows kind of looked a little funny. So I'm going to try something a little different. But for now, I'm going to attach this at the back because I do have the back set perfectly. I had to redo all my wire because it was wrapped around these. So I had to reset all that after the passenger side pad was on. Um, the other thing is my pads came with a, um, it's got a pad under here that is the same material as the top. And then it has a, uh, a bound edge and it had another bound edge down here and then what you do is you, you staple it all on, then you lay down this foam and glue this uh, on the upper side of the bound edge. So from underneath, you just see two bound edges and you don't have any fasteners touching the bottom of the roof of the top material. But uh, mine were too wide and uh, I'm not sure if they sent me the wrong ones or whatever. I called uh, 
convertible top guys. He seemed very concerned about it because he's, he's convinced that these are the pads he sends with every Mustang of this year. <clears throat> and he hasn't heard back from anybody. But it may be that other people know something I don't know or they just run them up higher. And uh, he said to just run them up higher. I just don't think it should go past this indentation on the bow because that indentation is to make up for the thickness of this so that the top comes across here smoothly. So I just cut mine. I, um, it looks funky right now, but I laid it down here, got a chalk line, cut it, glued it, folded it over, and, um, and then I'll trim this. So in the end, it'll be like that which is not terribly attractive from the top, but from the bottom side, it'll be a nice clean uh, turned edge. So it'll look bound. Not that you can even see it because it all takes place above this frame until you get in the very back. And then, uh, you know, if you stuck your head up under there, you probably could see it. But, but anyway, just in the interest of making it clean, I've done that. So now I'm gonna, uh, get to work on stapling the other end of this and then trimming it all up and sorting out where the bows go. So I know that this bow is right. It's really solid. I'll check it once again, just to be sure. So I've got about 21. My measurement is supposed to be 20 and three quarters, but I've got 21 from this trim to the center of the middle of this. And that's so that when I put tension on this window, it's going to pull it back down a bit. I'm going to allow it to pull it back down a bit. And then to make sure it's square, I check right at this dent. And I've got 19 and a half here, I've got 19 and a half there. So I know that this is all running parallel to the trim and you know basically to the back of the car. So I know this is where I want it. I don't know about the two middle bows. I'm going to uh, blow tension on this thing. And I'm going right to this indentation here. Oops. staple just to check it. It's pretty clean. Now I'm going to put a little tension down and away.